I'd like to welcome everyone here. I think there's Haynes. Could you raise your hand so we know which? Yay, Haynes. Thank you. <laughs> um, a Craig came tonight. Craig Library. Who's from Craig? Anyone raising their hand? Yes, the center one. Thank you. Um, Kenai. Is there someone from Kenai in the picture? And Wrangell. Wrangell, raising your hands. Thank you very much. And I see, if there's someone I've missed, please say the library you're from. You can turn off. There you go. We're from Petersburg. Petersburg, oh, welcome. Right. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. And I do believe there's one more. Is there one more that I missed? You can say where you're from. Uh, this is Artemis Video Conferencing Services. I don't think there's anybody there right now, but that's Clock One Library. Clock One, thank you very much. Excellent. Well, maybe someone will be coming in. All right, my name is Carol, and tonight we are going to have some readings with the Dauenhauers. Um, I'd like to read a little bit about this program because I'm just so thankful to the Haynes community for putting this together. Um, and I want to welcome the people here in Juneau also. It says on, the, on here that the project um, seeks to bring this region's rich history, cultures, and traditions to life through creative literature. And it is in the creation of the Chilkat Valley Story Board in crossing boundaries through creative communications. And it has been sponsored by the Chilkoot Indian Tribal Government, the Haynesboro Library, the Friends of the Juno Library, and a grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. So thank you, community, and all of you in Alaska. Um, we're getting, we're starting to learn how to use this owl equipment. It's, it's quite a learning curve. So thank you for joining us tonight. And I thank you, everyone in Juno, also for coming. And I'll introduce Nora and Richard Dauenhauer. And I'm hoping that the picture will come to the Juno site for full screen and that you'll turn your I think mics, we're down the bottom. Yeah, you'll turn your mics <laughs> off and we'll have questions at the very end. So thank you very much. There right. we, oh, we're, <laughs> OK. <Anyways. clears throat> Hi there. We're in Hello. slow motion here, and, and uh, <clears throat> this is a really new experience for uh, for us, I mean, for me. And I'm really excited about it. For, for years, we've thought about these kinds of distributed uh, presentations, and, and uh, it's hard to know who to look at, whether I'm looking at the screen for everybody out there in video land. But anyhow, what we thought we'd do is, uh, you know, read some poems and then open it to questions and, and, and uh, uh, comments. Uh, I have a question from the start. Maybe somebody can help me with: Is um, the owl associated with Athena, the the, go the goddess Athena? I'm not sure, because huh? uh -huh. Minerva, but Minerva isn't Minerva the Roman version of Athena. All right. So, and and something to do with poetry and books and libraries. Okay. Wow. So thanks, Robin, the historian. He. His mind goes way back to antiquity there, and he's, he's helping us out. <clears throat> so I thought that that was kind of interesting, because I didn't know what owl meant. And I was trying to meditate on that today, you know, what, what does owl mean? And I learned when I looked at the fine print that it means uh, online with libraries. So in case any of you didn't know that, you, you've, been, you've learned something at the library tonight. And uh, so the wisdom of, of uh, the ages continues. But anyhow, I thought it was really neat. So if, if owls have also have something to do with, with learning and wisdom, uh, that's a good name. Somebody must have thought of that way, way back. Um, anyhow, that was my question for everybody. Um, do you want to read a few? Or you want me to read a few? Well, uh, um, I just want to explain a few things in my poem. It's all about tide. I grew up on a boat. So I know all about tides and stuff like that, having to do with the sea. 
and this um, poem is about tired. I call it, I, I think you remember when the catamaran came from Hawaii? Any of you remember that? Well, anyway, they, they asked a sea Alaska to give them a log. So sea Alaska went, my brother, or went and got a log, and they sent it to Hawaii, and uh, they turned it, that log into a catamaran. So this is a constellation course hanging loose, arriving, awaiting rather, awaiting arrival of the Hawaii Loau catamaran of the Polynesian Voyaging Society. Extreme anticipation, you are like love medicine to all of us. All the Tlingits of Southeast Alaska were as if in a tide pool, turning when we heard the Hawaiians are on their way. From Ketchikan, we heard word of you. From Wrangell, Petersburg, Angoon, Huna, Haines, all your ports of call when you were nearing Juneau, as news of you grew stronger, the tide rushed in full bore, taking us along on a current of anxious to see you. Symptoms of love medicine, smitten, helplessly, awaiting to see you, anticipation to the max. Aloha. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Steve is Steve, your hearing is good. Yeah, we're still a little disoriented here. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll read a couple of poems. Um, we can just go back and forth for a while. Um, when I do readings, I like it think of it like weddings with something old and something new and something borrowed and something blue. Um, so I've got some old stuff, some poems from a couple of thousand years ago, uh, as well as some of my own older ones, as well as some new ones. And I feel uh, um, like reading some of my translations tonight, so I'm going to read a few borrowed. And um, the blue is always questionable as whether I should read uh, uh, something that's sad or something that's pornographic, so <laughs> hard to know on, depending on, on one's audience. Uh, and speaking of audiences, I, I, I can recognize some of the faces from Haynes. I can't see the other sites too well. And most of the faces in Juno, I'd say about 99% of the, the folks here. So it's really wonderful to see. Uh, so it feels like a family reading. So I'm going to start out with a, with a couple of family poems here. And we have some... Uh, some kids in the room, so I'll, and I see some kids in the audience, so I'm going to uh, read a couple of uh, family poems. This one's called The Facts of Life, um, <clears throat> and we have one of the grandmas in the room here, and one of the great grandmas. So this is called Facts of Life. Grandma Lee and grandsons discuss where babies come from, says Aidan Phillip, going on seven. I was an action figure. I came out of a Lucky Charm box. <laughs> and we have another one called Breakfast at Grandma Nora's, which is Grandma Nora here, and Grandma Lee is, is, is over there. Cole, age six, is into rocks and drawing Zuni symbols. He demonstrates on paper, shows his crystal, and tells about his rock collection. Grandma Nora shows her rocks to Cole, Every fossil, every pebble has a story. Alsec river rafting, copper river fishing, jars of anchorage, volcanic ash, they trade. Gabe, age four, is contrary today. He speculates on pancakes. I'm going to feed my butt and poop out my mouth. <laughs> Grandma Nora expounds on coprolites, the poop that turns to stone, 
What a concept. Fossil doo-doo. The final word on turds. So maybe that's pushing the blue, but we've we got the... Uh, uh, um, and uh, for the Haynes folks, um, uh, one of our good friends uh, died a couple of years ago, Ron Scullin, and I have a, um, a poem here that, or in fact, several that I've been working on about uh, that. So I'd, I'd like to read this one in memory of, of Ron and for the connecting with some of the friends up here in Haynes. It's called Homage to Po Chui, and he was a Chinese uh, poet. And it has an epigraph from uh, one of his songs. And the epigraph is, grown this old, both of us together, I still wonder what it's like to be old. My love for old lost friends thickens while memories of youth thin away. There's nothing left but this idle talk, enough and more for your next visit. So sort of inspired by that, we were both reading him, and here's the main poem. We linger over lines from Bo Chui, a.k.a. Bai Chui, who writes that once you're packed and ready for your long journey, it doesn't really matter if you hang around a while longer. The poems come alive, bring lines for assisted living, lifelines from centuries ago as old friends visit, pause for midday naps and visit on until it's time to go. So I will uh, pass back to, to, oh, to Nora. You. She's banging on my arm here. <laughs> uh, we floated the Elsa River several years, and uh, I got one poem out of there. We read uh, Tlingit literature on the way down. Anyway, uh, this is the poem I got from there. And it's almost a, a spring around the corner, right? So I'm going to read flowers. Tyranny on the Alsac. If Monet had only seen the flowers at Elsick Peninsula, I bet he would have painted impressions of them. The landing beach alone, all covered with dwarf fireweed, going along the beach, down river, wild asters, along the trail to Elsick Lake, more fireweed, Perfusion of Indian paintbrush in red and orange and yellow. Pink pyrolus, purple larkspurs, grass of Parnassus anemone, chocolate lilies, Jacob's ladders, strawberries. At Elsa Lake, more fireweed. Dwarf around our sauna pond. I would love to see how Monet would have seen these against the Elsa Glacier, icebergs, and Mount Fairweather capped with ice and sunlight. That's it. Maybe I should read some of the uh, Shinkit oratory. Would you like that? It's in English. <clears throat> uh, this uh, oratory is um, Matthew, not Matthew Lawrence, but uh, 
David Gaddison. Could you help me? Okay. <laughs> I'm the audience. <laughs> David Gaddison, Huna, 1968. We are feeling sick. I made a mistake already. <laughs> anyway, um, we believe that words can uh, start erasing pain, especially uh, those who are in pain after someone dies. So this is um, one of those speeches um, made for um, for those to speak to those who feel pain after a funeral. And, and also you need to know that Nora would be the orator speaking to the to the people who've lost someone. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to be responding from the as the audience people. And the word you'll hear a lot is awa, which is sort of untranslatable, but like right on or that's it or amen or something where you're expressing uh, mm -hmm. agreement with the speaker. Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, uh. <laughs> uh, David Kadishan, Huna, 1968. My father's brothers, all my brothers-in-law, oh, uh. we are feeling your pain, feeling it. I will imitate my brother's mother's brother, son of Kakish, your child, Tzadkhan Khan. I will imitate your brother-in-law. My brother-in-law, Kityanayi. Katushtu. I will imitate your brother-in-law. Gusatan. I will imitate your child. Thank you. Surely this is a hard thing to do, and it is difficult to handle a thing like this and sensitive. We are in need of my mother's brothers. In the river. Well, the river would swell, the river. In the river, in the lake. The rain would fall on the water. When the river had swollen, it would flow under the tree. The earth would crumble along the bank. That's when it would think of breaking. When it had broken down the river, it would drift down the river. It would think of going out into the world. On this great ocean, it would drift. From there, the wind would blow over it. Your brothers-in-law are listening to you. After the wind would blow over it, it would begin to roll with the waves of fine sand. When it rolled on the waves to the sand, it would drift ashore. It would be pounded there by the waves. It would be pounded there. Here the tide would leave it dry, would leave it dry. It would lie there. In the morning, sun would begin to shine on it. In the morning. After the sun had been shining on it, it would begin to dry out. My how hope is that you become like this from now on. My brothers-in-law, whoever is one. Thank you. You created me, Chukanedi. You created me. This is why I too feel for you. Yes, this is the way Kwai Naka is. Oh, well. In this world, we're still holding each other's hands. Neither do we overlook our dead. Yes, at this moment. When the sun shines on it, my hope is that it dries out. The flowing from your face. It shall be. 
let it turn to joy for you is my Thank wish. Thank you. Thank you. You are, you all know your brother-in-law, your father, sisters. Thank you. Thank you. This is the way it is. Yes, you will stand the way your father's brothers used to do so when such things happened. Yes, these are the things that might warm your feelings. The people I'm living in place of now, yes, used to bring these out for you to see. This is the way it is. Thank you, thank you. And then he rests a little bit. My brother-in-law, those who are my father's brothers, uh, those who are my father's sisters, uh, we will imitate your ancestors. There is no way they can do anything for you. You can see them, wear them. Yes, we will try. This is the way it is. This is all. This is all. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, my fathers. Thank you. There's more speeches, but that's David. Mm -hmm. um, I'll do a little thing for Kate here. Thanks for this. Good place to hear the sounds from far away. Um, most people in Alaska um, know me because of what Nora and I have done with Tlingit, but um, actually I'm a retreaded English teacher and a retreaded German teacher and a retreaded Russian teacher. Um, and when the world was too much for me, I studied classical Greek. So I'd like to um, read a few poems uh, that I translated from classical Greek. And th these are, to me, very, very exciting. This first one um, is by a fellow named Asclepiados, who lived in and wrote around this poem, anyhow, 320 BC. So that makes this poem 2,320. No, oh, 40 years old or 20 years old. I don't know. It's, it's old, okay? And also, uh, these, these are from a collection called the Greek Anthology, which was put together from around 300 B.C. right on up to 900 A.D., and people adding to it. And the, the, the very humbling thing about this is uh, every generation thinks it's the first to discover uh, love and the opposite gender. And uh, I could think this first poem I'll read uh, could be written by just about any college student, um, at least <laughs> it's familiar. So here, this is Asclepiadus from uh, 320 BC. The winter night is longer than the stars and stormy. Back and forth, I pass her door in darkness, rain soaked, wounded by desire for her who treats me with deceit. Not love did Aphrodite strike me with, but grief. The red-hot arrow sizzles in the rain. And if you've ever seen the little Cupid's arrow and the Valentine card, this is where it comes from, boys and girls. It's, it's been around for 2,000 <laughs> years. But I love that, you know, the Aphrodite's arrow, and then the, the arrow sizzles in the rain, and this poor guy can't get a date with this girl that he's idolizing. It's, it's just... Uh, uh, <clears throat> Here's one I translated for Nora. This, this is by a fellow named Meli Meliagros, who lived uh, 140 BC to 70 BC, so he's a little bit younger. This goblet has, has felt that sweet delight and tells me how it has touched the mouth of Xenophila, woman prone to love. Oh, blessed cup, but now, if she would only pass her mouth instead, place her lips on mine, and drinking to my health, drain away my soul. <laughs> this is good stuff. Here's another one by the same guy. Tamarian, your kisses glue, your eyes are fire. Look at me, I smolder, touch me, and I'm stuck. <laughs> and there are kind of a lot of self-deprecating uh, stuff in here because they... Uh, um, here's the... Uh, one, 
let's see, <clears throat> uh, a fellow named Marcos Argentiaros, 70 BC. You do all the work, Melissa, of the flower-loving bee. I've learned by heart now how you let the honey drip from your lips, sweet kiss by kiss, then how you sting me when it's time to pay. And it's a pun on the word, the, the name Melissa is, means bee in Greek. So he's, he's punning on, on that. So, yeah. uh, <clears throat> yeah. And here, uh, another a late, later now, this guy's uh, 560 AD, uh, is sort of the classic for the self-deprecating love, because he, he just never seems to uh, score, as you'd say in college in the days. <clears throat> I have her breasts in hand and mouth to mouth and all around her silver throat and shoulders, unrestrained, I feed in frenzy, yet no way have I wholly seized this Venus. I'm still exhausted, working on this virgin, refusing me her bed. She gave herself half to Aphrodite, half Athena. I waste away to nothing in between. <laughs> so, anyhow, that's some, some uh, ancient Greek stuff uh, for you. And... Uh, if you know, Nora's got something picked, otherwise well, I'll, I'll read I, it to you. I'm looking for it. <laughs> hey, you're looking in the wrong place. I can see that. <laughs> but, uh, well, while she's looking, I'll... Well, I'll... <laughs> I started off with uh, with Sing It Orator. Maybe I'll stay on it. <laughs> Shall I? Okay. <laughs> I'll do Jesse. Good. Jessie Dalton is my favorite lady. I remember her when I was small, a little girl. She was mean. I felt like she was mean. But when you, when I started to write her speech, she was anything but mean. Jessie Dalton, Puna, 1968. Does death take pity on us too? My brother's children, oh, uh. my father's, all my father's. It doesn't take pity on us either. This thing that happens. That's how it is. Which is why you hear their voices like this, your father's. Lest your tears fall without honor. Thank you, thank you. That flowed from your faces. For them, they have all come out this moment. Your fathers have all come uh -huh. out. They are still present. It's how I feel about my grandparents. Thank you. Here someone stands wearing one. This mountain tribe's dog. It is just as if. It's barking for your pain, is how I'm thinking about it. It's Thank you. My father's, my brother's children, my father's sisters, yes, here. Someone is standing next to it. It's Raven who went down along the bow kelp. Someone is standing closer next to it. Kedeyek's rope. That is the closer one. Someone is standing next to it. Yes, Harry. Oops. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. It's the beaver blanket from Chilcat. A Chilcat uh -huh. rope. Thank you. To tuck your father. It was once his blanket. Once his Chilcat rope. Ho ho. Thank you. Because of you, he came out. Oh, thank you. Yes, at this moment, all of them seem to me, they're revealing their faces. Your father's sisters saying, mother, my mother saying, oh. That's it. That's right. Her robe, her turn robe, a person who is yeah. feeling yes, like you, you would be brought by canoe to your father's point on a ha. That is when the name would be called out, it is said, of the person who is feeling grief. Yes, F 
father's sake to Shred. Oh, uh, yes, my grandfather's son, Kuud and Kaz. Oh, uh, my brother's daughter's son, Kidi and I. Oh, uh, yes, you're my father. Yes, my father's sister's son, Kukena Ad. Oh, uh, How very much for your grief. Your father's sisters are revealing their faces, my brother's sons. Thank you. Katush too. Kaksaka. Yes, my brother's wife on Kakshawistan. Yes, how very much it is as if they're revealing their faces. It's how I'm thinking about them. Your sisters in law, yes. They are revealing their faces. The shirt that belonged to Weha. It was only recently we completed the rites for him. That's the one there, Raven shirt. Thank you. You heard him here also. Waha. This brother of mine, this peacemaker of yours, this shirt of Waha will remain in his hands, in his care. Thank you. Now it's as if he's come out for you to see. Yes. Yes. How proud he too used to be wearing it. This brother-in-law of yours. Oh, very much. Raven nest robe. Here, this father, sister of yours, stand wearing it. And on the far side is Yakayin Dushat, your father's sisters. Yeah. Yes, we had long since given up hope of their return, these father's <coughs> sisters of yours. Your father's. Oh, oh, thank you. Yes, Raven, who went down along the bull kelp shirt. Your father's cut oh, uh, It's his shirt. That's the your one. Your brother's children are listening to you. That's the one there. I don't feel it has burned. Yes, it's the same one in which your father's brother is standing <coughs> there in front of you. Thank you, thank you. That is why. Yes, Kusatan, oh, uh, it will be just as if I will have named all of you. Those who are my sisters-in-law. Yes, can I reach the end, my brother's children? Yes, can I reach the end? These turns I haven't completely explained. Yes, these turns. Your father's sisters would fly over the person who is feeling grief. Oh, uh... <clears throat> Then they would have let their down fall like snow over the person who is feeling grief. Your brother's children are listening. That's when their down isn't felt. That's when I feel it's as if your father's sisters are flying back to their nests with your grief. Thank you, indeed. Yes. Here someone stands. Here my mother's mother's brother. His hat, yes. To the mouth of Taku, he went by boat with that hat to his grandparents, to his grandparents. Yes, from there it said, he acquired the frog hat. Along with it came the shirt from Waiha. That's it. Yes. It also came from Taku. That is why I keep saying thank you that you're standing in front of, of it's standing in front of you at this moment. Thank you. Yes, during the warm season, this father of yours would come out. That's when I feel it's as if your father's hat has come out for your grief. Yes. Thank you indeed. Your grandparents had, with your grief, it will burrow down with it, with your grief. 
you will burrow down. Your brother's sons are listening. Not that it can heal you, my brother's children, my father's. Thank you. My father's sisters, my sisters-in-law, and now, yes, it is like the saying, they are only imitating them. Lest they grope aimlessly. Thank you, indeed. The way your grandparents said. That's why it's as if your fathers are guiding them. Here is one. Here is one. Here someone stands wearing one. The hat of Yukisku Kuk, this grandfather of mine. Uh -huh. He too has stood up to face you. Uh -huh. Yes, your father, his hat, Kuwinagas. Thank you, indeed. He has stood up to face Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, the loon hat. Yes, and tear. Yes, is the one this brother of mine explained a while ago. How that tree rolled for a while on the waves. The sun would put its rays on it. Yes, it would dry its grief to the core. At this moment, the sun is coming out over you, my grandparents' mask. That's it, thank you. Oh, oh. At this moment, my hope is that your grief, like it's drying your core, it shall Please be, thank headdress. you. headdress, yes. Your father's sisters would reveal their faces from it, from Grislak. Yes, that's the one there now. Someone is standing there with it, this headdress. Thank you, indeed. My grandfather's headdress. Thank you. That's it. Um, this is something that changed my life when Nora first read this to me. I, uh, I had no idea, of, and Nora is the first one that had ever translated or to say taken Tlingit oratory that was performed uh, and recorded in performance and translated it. Because, like most people, if, if you're at uh, you know the potlatches or the memorials, and it's going by overhead and it's in Tlingit. Uh, you know, the next morning you'd say, well, what was you know, Uncle Harry talking about last night? And you wouldn't <clears throat> um, understand what, what was happening. So oratory had never been uh, written down. Songs had been written down and stories. And to me, when Nora first read this uh, years ago, it was over 40 years ago when we first met, uh, the first thing I could think of was Elizabethan poetry with, with all of the metaphor and John Donne and, and Shakespeare. And this level of metaphor and simile was just uh, absolutely incredible. So it's something that, that uh, was, a, for me, a life-changing uh, moment. Uh, I'd like to read a couple of more, and then maybe we can see talk to the folks uh, out there. I want to read um, a translation of a, a um, um, I'll read two of Rilke, and then I'd like to read one of my uh, uh, <clears throat> most recent poems. Rilke was a, a German poet who wrote about 100 years ago. He died in the late 1920s. Uh, <clears throat> so this poem was written in 1902. It's called Autumn Day. Lord, it is time. The summer was enormous. Lay now thy shadow on the sundials and on the meadows let the winds blow loose. Command the fruits to ripen Give the vineyard a few more southern days, then press them to completion. Chase the final sweetness into mellow wine. Who has no house now will not build him one. Who's now alone will long remain alone. Will stay up reading, writing, sorting endless sheaves of paper, and restlessly wander up and down in autumn lanes against the driving leaves. So, uh, and I'll read um, <clears throat> debating whether to read one or the other. Maybe I'll end up reading them both. When I get in the mood for a sonnet, I, I kind of go to Rilke. And some stuff, like when I do my Russian Pasternak, I almost never rhyme. But with Rilke, uh, this is probably his most famous poem. It's, it's about a, uh, a panther he, uh, circling in a cage. 
and uh, there's a, 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 I tried to kind of get the the image um, uh, uh, and the sounds that he works with in, in German so I could get some of the to create that in English. His vision is so worn from passing bars that bars and only bars are whirled before him. It seems there are a thousand bars before him and beyond a thousand bars, no world. His easy motion, supply flowing pace, every circle closer, more intensified, becomes a dance of strength, defines the place in which a mighty will stands, stupefied. Only sometimes will the feline film that dims his pupil rise, an image enter silently and start passing through the tension stillness of the limbs to halt its being in the heart. I've been struggling with that last line for 40 or 50 years and I get it one of these days. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Anyhow, I'll read one, one more real quick, and then I'd like to read my... Uh, okay, uh, I need one more. Oh, you can go, go ahead, and then I'll okay. uh, you can read as long as you I, I think the salmon egg pullers are here, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Linda and Lee, they're, they're salmon egg pullers from Excursion. And I'm sure you got salmon egg pullers out there in this video land here. <laughs> oh. Any salmon egg pullers out there? Could be. <laughs> See, oh, there's a. <laughs> Who is that? There's somebody waving to me. Who? Salmon egg puller. Two seventy-five an hour. <laughs> you learn to dance with machines. Keep time with the header. Swing your arms. Reach inside the salmon cavity. With your left hand to where the head was. Grab lightly, top of egg sack, with the fingers, <coughs> pull gently, but quick. Reach immediately with the right hand for the lower egg sack. Pull this gently. Slide them into a chute to catch the eggs. Reach into the next salmon. Do this four hours in the morning with 15-minute <coughs> coffee break. Go home for lunch. Attend to kids and feed them. Work four hours in the afternoon with 15-minute coffee break. Go home for dinner. Attend to kids and feed them. Go back for two more hours. Four more hours. Reach, pull gently. Go home for the day. Attend to kids who missed you. When fingers start swelling, Soak them in Epsom salts. If you don't have time, stand under a shower with your hands up under the spray. Go to bed early if you can. Next morning, if your fingers are sore, stand, start dancing immediately. The pain will go away after I see fish with eggs. <laughs> The Haynes people might get a kick out of this one. Okay. Uh, I'll do one that's a basketball player. This this uh, man played on uh, the gold medal tournament, which is coming up real soon. And I really liked the way he played. He was good. In memory of Jeff David, regional basketball All-American Hall of Famer. Even your name proclaims it. In Tlingit, Sokkis, wolf rip like a bracelet, like a hoop, scoring hook shots at center, shooting from the key, your body motion form a hoop, wolfing up points. <laughs> Great. Well, <clears throat> let me read uh, one more Rilke translation, and then I'll read my newest poem, and then uh, if Nora has got something, and then we could, we could go over. Um, this poem was always good for debate when I read it in, in class, whether I was teaching German or English. Um, it's called Final Evening, and the poem is pretty 
straightforward in some respects. The army is going off to war, and there's a guy playing a harpsichord, and, and his, his girlfriend is kind of uh, all there. And then the, the debate begins as to whether this guy is really a nasty SOB who is just nasty, or whether he's really romantic and, you know, uh, and I'll leave it up to you as whether you like the guy or whether you don't. And the ladies are always divided on, on uh, this. A night in distant driving off to war, as all the troops in convoy passed the manor, he kept on playing at the harpsichord without a pause and raised his eye to her, almost like you look into a mirror, knowing how his face betrayed his grief increasingly, each fine young feature more seductive with every light motif. Then suddenly it seemed to fade away. She stood as if an anguish in the bay window, heartbeat pounding short of breath. A fresh breeze drifted in. He ceased his play and mirrored, strangely foreign on the hallway stand, the black shako with the head of death. The shako are those kind of West Point type military hats. And, uh, but Rilke was great. Uh, how you know, And I tried to, in English, you rhyme breath and death. And he could he did that in German as heartbeat and death, yeah. and geklopf and, and a totenkopf. Yeah. I would like to read my very latest um, poem, and uh, <clears throat> uh, as I say, I've been interested in, in older languages, and most recently I've been getting involved with Hebrew, which goes back there and has been around for a while. Um, and this one is called Harvest Festival and dedicated to our friends at Panim Hadashot in Sukkot Shalom. So we have a, a couple here in, in, in the audience. Uh, and part of the, uh, one of the things that interests me is, is whether it's Orthodox Christianity or Orthodox Judaism. Uh, we have this in the Judeo-Christian traditions that go back to the desert, you know, thousands of years ago. And here we are in Juno in the pouring rain. Uh, yeah, try to make sense out of all of this stuff. So that's part of what the what the poem is is, is about. Um, Potatoes 2012. Sukkot brings no relief. Redundancy of rain dances. Hosannas from deserts of Leviticus to North Pacific rainforests. October 1. Postpone the harvest yet another day. Having missed the only three September rain-free days and now officially the rainy season starts. Festival, day three, the rain stops. 5 a.m., the moon is full, sky clear, and stars bright in the darkness. First ice and windshields, fall is really here. With daybreak, fog settles in. Then sun filters through the mist as if through branches on a desert shelter roof, bringing to awareness, one by one, from mountaintops to gardens, things of earth. Sideline this harvest, hip replacement imminent. This year, granddaughters, great-grandchildren, take to field on a treasure hunt for heritage potatoes. Moses works his fork, searching for the fulcrum point on which to lift and part the earth, as Elijah and Sophia vie for revelations of the hidden fruits of earth. Mothers explain the hulls of springtime seed potatoes we planted months ago, the toddler Joshua and hobbler I observe the action, his stroller and my chair astride a waiting row of hilled potatoes as we watch the harvest kept alive another generation. <coughs> so. Thank you. Thank you. I'll do the uh, point through Joanne Collins. Okay. Sounds, sounds good. Raven at the Grand Canyon. Joanne Townsend is a um, poet friend of mine. Uh, I really miss her. She left Alaska. I don't know where she is right Most now. Most recently, New Mexico, but, I oh. know, but I'm not sure. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, tell you, they were in Florida, but it rained too much there, too. <laughs> Raven at Grand Canyon for Joanne Townsend. All my senses are alive, jumping nerves at the edge from my toes to fingertips as they play tricks become ravens circling over me 
every hair on my head seems connected to him, ready to pull me over from Maricopa Point to Precambrian. <laughs> so, do we want to connect with uh, folks out there in video land and cyberspace? Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Any any questions or comments or requests or anything? Uh, let her rip. Hello, everyone out there. Haynes and Craig Rango. Kina, Petersburg. Petersburg. Do you have any questions that you'd like to ask? Petersburg. Petersburg, yes. You can unmute your uh, microphones and uh, speak up. Say hello. 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 Hi. Yes. Would it, would it be possible for Nora to do one in Clinkit with the translation? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank or you. Could we um, do David again in, in Clinkit? Or, or do you have, uh, you've got the short ones I in here. I could do um, <clears throat> either Austin or... Why don't you, um, you could do Austin. Uh, since, yeah, uh, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Thank you. No, it's over here. Mm -hmm. On this side. No, it's okay. it is. You want it in Tlingit? There was a request, yeah. Yes. Y yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm doing Austin Hammond from 1968. His name in Tlingit was Donna Walk. Huna, 1968. Akhtawasiku, Khatsuk Akhtatane, Akhsane Has, Akhat Has, Kakhwasa. Khatsu ishen den akhtu ya te ya khat khat kaude ya ye chur ki wakshi yit kwa shate at hayai dat ya an da kwa kut ikhlebusi akhi sani has stakat ye te ye nkathinin ayo yu athangke nu jin a yak eza tuku yat han an awa takwasa yu athangke atak ye nkathinin tu athas khut nkaste kun ya yitat aya a eighteen of hiety. It's just the beginning. Kaya Yanak a shootana Yakadia Tuho Ach Kak to who to quest a do eat it Ach Gioti. Kaya Kenach Kleg Yati Kenachish Yakleg Yati Ah Kwasayak Kes Yawti Ish Kidiana Yayi Kanyan Dot Anashi Anas 
natukjeyi yai tutla ishan nikah hutso so ya kunashish at ye tutakh ke akati kunashish khaya ye tat ye qwqo a I would like to speak, <coughs> this is a translation, also my, my father's brothers, my father's sisters, yes, how very much I too feel, yes, and even being here, indeed I am with nothing to show you. At this moment, he came out here with it. Your father's brothers are listening to In many to you. ways, you were like this. Yes, it's uh, always used to speak. Here is his <coughs> robe. Here he stands with oh, it. Uh, How much he used to speak when things were like this, when he expressed affection among his father's sisters. At this moment, we are in need of him. And on this side, someone is standing next to it. Katya, he too, my mother's brother, Tsukwalt, his brother, his robe, yes, I own it in place of him. Oh, well. And there is one, Thank there you. is one thing, yes, I will just explain. It's not here, my father's Kidanai. Oh, well. This brother in law of yours would speak proudly of you. Thank you. This Natukji, whom we have. He too has also come out here for you to, for your grief. Thank you. Yes, to remove it from you. Thank you. And now that blanket, indeed, it's just as if it has become a towel in my hand to wipe away your tears. This is how I feel, too. My father's sister. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you want to read one that you translated into Thinkit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nora did uh, some translations of, of Basho from you know, the English translation of the Japanese and also some of the Cold Mountain poems that Gary Snyder had translated. And then... Uh, uh, I don't know which one, if you want to do the... I don't want to do the grasshopper. <laughs> do the old pond, that's a good one. Um, the Basho is a famous poem about the, the old old pond and the frog jumps in and so... Uh, anyhow, let's right, right. <clears throat> Old pond. Tako ak o yahin to chikken kuch kachishja. Old pond. It's a, there's no English translation. You gotta Jeez. get it in the Japanese. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> you were inspired, my dear. Let's see. Uh, Would you like the title of that book you're reading from? Say again? What is the title of the book you're reading from? Oh, oh, this is uh, The Droning Shaman, which is out on the, the table there. And, and yeah, and then she did also E.E. Um, uh, e. E. Cummings. This one is all over the page here. It's his famous grasshopper poem. And it becomes rearranging the grasshopper, and uh, and then a concrete oh, that poem. Was fun doing. Yeah, this is probably her most widely anthologized. It's the that very famous concrete poem where they have apple, 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 and then a worm in the middle, and then uh, oh, I guess uh, <laughs> this here it is. Yeah. Check it out of your public library, um, and uh, I have Ernestine's. Okay. Good. <laughs> I have. Uh, poem about <coughs> my friend in Huna. Once in a while I go there and uh, visit with her. And this is one time I did. 
Ernestine's house, Puna, Alaska, 6 a.m. I woke to smell of smoke, of fresh wood crackling from the stove, bringing back the feel of my father's clan house, brown bear den house, radiating family's care. I almost I can almost taste the smoked deer meat coming out of a container of seal oil. Brown bear den house, a cavern of memory. And that's it. <laughs> and any, if there's any questions about poems or anything else too, or we're open for that. Thank you. <laughs> and that last one was from yeah, this one is Nora's uh, it's Life Woven with Song, University of uh, Arizona Press. And Nora by the Smokehouse on the back. And the cover is... Um, Joanne George. Yeah, jo Joanne George's uh, artwork. No questions. <laughs> hey, Nora and Dick, hi, we're calling in from Wrangell. Hi, Wrangell. You're a little blurry. Can you focus your, keep keep that and focus it a little bit? We're gonna, we can, your faces are blurred a little bit. Uh, uh, this is Artemis Video Conference and Services. Unfortunately, that's the commodity internet, and with the speed oh. right now, that's the best that we can do. I apologize. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. We, hi, I, I think we, uh, Quan Klein, is that you? Uh, okay, yeah. Quan Klein, Quan Klein, Quan Klein, Quan Klein, Quan Klein, uh -huh. Yeah, you could see uh, yeah, uh, video operate. Yeah, I will. <laughs> yeah, <it's just laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just the same as word for moose. I don't know if it's because of the the big, you know, tufts or the big antlers or. What's the word? Uh, it's just, yeah. Uh, well, nourish it. The word for uh, uh, moose and owl and cliget. Just. Tisk and disk. Disk is a uh, moose, I think. Tisk. Yeah. Good to have you, Rangan. That's good. <laughs> All our friends down there. Now, I think this is wonderful, this, this technology of the, um, uh, and, and for doing more of this. and yeah, It's great. Yeah. Hello. Oh. Hi, we, we got a Ains, question yeah. for Judo. I you're going to cheese. I think it's a hot here. It's a hot here. It's a hot here. It's a hot here. It's a uh, you can say it in English, too. Keep, uh, Swanson Harbor. Swanson Harbor, do you remember Swanson Harbor? Oh, yes. That's where I, uh, my father built a smokehouse there. And we dried 300 Salmon at a time. That's a that for was, winter. That was, uh, happy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Dry fish. I couldn't help myself either to tack us in. Eat, 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 eat. Good luck, cheese. Cheese. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Playmates. Yeah, I know, over there. <laughs> Tell us the story. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we have a, a question here from Juno. Let's take that first and then maybe come back to, to the story. Uh, oh, no, I don't want to interrupt. Oh, no, no. It's a good break because he was wanted, uh, sort of a request for a story. Oh, the the flowers. Um, I think it was about a storm. There's a comment involved, and, and the students were wondering if when the people come out, if the people are a metaphor for mountains. Yeah, it was a a poem about mountains. Chilkat Range. You can see it from journal. That's what I was trying to write about. <laughs> uh, I think it's here. Um, no, I think it's in this one. Um, I'll try to see if I can find it in here. Oh. Well, let me see. If all else fails, use the table of contents. <laughs> Maybe it's in, in that one. I was thinking, of course it is. Okay. <laughs> oh, the storm. Yeah. The storm? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then it's probably, uh, maybe. It's, it's in this one. Okay. Tell me. Tell me when. <coughs> Nora. Darcy. Do you have Horace? Do you have Horace Mark's poem about the Fourth of July ravens imitating the oh. the plains? No. No, but he used to recite um, Captain, my Captain. <laughs> I don't know who wrote that. Whitman. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. There you go. The storm, page 89. Okay. The storm, like people emerging from steam bath, bending over, steaming from their heads and shoulders, the ring of mountains from the Chilkat Range to the Juno ice field, as if in steam bath towels of snow flurries at their feet are foaming white caps of sea like water thrown on rocks steaming from the heat. <laughs> Nora, this is Lonnie Hutch from Cluck One. I just wanted to say thank you for um, all sharing all your poems, and I, I just wanted to say I really uh, resonated with the story 
the poem about Ernestine's house because it reminded me of my grandmother's house. And me, um, when I stayed with her in the summertime and I'd wake up to the sound of wood crackling in the fire and um, coffee brewing and fresh bread and those kinds of things. And it just really, um, really made me feel connected. Goodness, cheese. Gonna change what I saw. Ah, that extra new gonna chew well, the echo the. That's what it's called. Remember, echo the. They used to make them with berries too. Beautiful stuff. Oh. Great stuff. Uh, Never get cold. <laughs> um, see, seeing a clock line here, I was trying to, f to find your poem about Jenny Lanat. Uh, oh, you're, yes. You're weaving. Uh, where is that? Uh, and you're a weaver. Oh, 30, too. 34. She's also a weaver. Uh -huh. Yeah, here, this. Uh, two poems for Jenny Tlana. You could read read them both. They're really short. Yeah. <clears throat> two poems for Jenny Tlana. Now as I weave, I see braiding so straight at the top of my weaving. I can also hear her Almost. and see her fingers when she slowed down. You could almost see what she was doing. Second poem. I started off so sure of what I was doing until Jenny said, saw and I was weaving, what I was weaving. She took one look and asked me, are you going to rip it back? <laughs> Without an answer. We ripped that night and stayed up braiding. Jenny wrapped me along with her braiding of my chill cat robe. <laughs> yeah, what? <or? laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Any more questions, <laughs> requests? I have a question, Richard. Have you thought about translating the, what, what was it, a Greek poem with the arrow? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about translating that to Klinkit? It could. That would be Nora's department. I would, uh, yeah, I'm sure that could be. <clears throat> Trans so what? Whether we want to translate the poem about the arrow from 320 B.C. into Tlingit. Oh, gee. <laughs> <clears throat> It'd be like with a thing on the Star Trek where somebody is asking Worf about uh, Klingon love poetry. So, I don't know. We have Tlingit love poetry. <laughs> yeah, that's an idea. Yeah, that's, uh, Here's but, one. <clears throat> Canada geese on Mendenhall Tide Flats. Canada geese eat their way through ice to spring. <laughs> they're out there. Yeah, they're out there now. Oh, here's one for all of us women <laughs> who slice salmon for the smokehouse. Well, for all Tlingit women who slice fish for the smokehouse. Slime squishing through gold and silver bracelets. Women slicing salmon. read you one of my favorite Nora poems here. At, uh, <clears throat> uh, this is, 
this is this when we were teaching this at college. Um, took, and I can't find it. Uh, oh well. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Spent an hour and a half debating this. It's called Museum. Alaska Native Youth Flickering in Strobe Light Disco Diorama. <laughs> college kids couldn't get it, but that's it. Alaska Native Youth Flickering in Strobe Light Disco Diorama. And, uh, I got that from babysitting teenagers. <laughs> Chaperoning is the yeah. operative word. I call it babysitting. <laughs> And then, uh, granddaughter's dancing, blossoms oh, swaying in the one. wind. I can't find it, but I got it memorized. Okay. It's in there. No, it's in there. <laughs> no, you wanna. Granddaughter's dancing, <laughs> blossoms swaying in the wind. That's, uh, but anyhow, that's <laughs> good for these teachers. Pardon? I think we should make granddaughters. Dance. Okay. That was it. Granddaughters dancing, blossoms swaying in the wind. <laughs> that the one that's on the, that was in the, which one was in the? There, there that's was the one on the, the bus. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. That uh, poem was on a, in a street fair journal. Street fair journal is the one the, um, uh, people wanted to display the poem on the streets, streetcars. <laughs> and buses. With, like uh, the yeah, so like, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Same the the advertising space up on the buses. Yeah. Yeah. For cigarettes and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the 12 largest cities in the United States, so we got phone calls from friends and she was on the trolley cars in San Francisco, then the Brooklyn bus subways in some places, and a whole bunch of other people were emailing and calling in. Hey, I saw your poem on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and it was also kind of cute because they paid, uh, I guess, yeah, they paid 400, I think, 400 dollars. Yeah, something like that. And so when Nora reads that to the kids, you say, okay, you know, a a, a lady poet sells a po a three line poem for 400 dollars. <laughs> how many? How much is she getting paid per line? <laughs> so it's a, unfortunately not everything pays that well. You have to yeah. Write epics to get paid by the mm -hmm. line. Thank you, folks, and thanks everybody out there in in, uh, the, in video land. This was a was a lot of fun. Chance to see familiar faces yes. we haven't seen in a while. Rangan here, Yadu Rangan. We're really happy. Goodness, Chishis is part of our Tlingit class. We're reading oh, out of your book. So we're, we came by, oh, the class is all here. And they wanted to wow. listen to you guys. Gunas Chish for reading, the, and Petersburg for requesting the the reading in Singit. It was music to our ears, Gunas Chish. And all of your book is so beautiful. We really loved it. It was a nice, quiet evening spent with you. <laughs> Whoop, we're, we're getting kicked out. <laughs> they're, turning off, they're turning off the electricity. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you all. Good cheese. Good cheese. Good cheese. Next month. Last Thursday of the month. So we're doing the series, the last series. Thank you.